Welcome to the Tech Collective channel, as we bring you 10 things you didn't know about the Hyperloop. Elon Musk has a vision for mankind that includes renewable fuels, autonomous vehicles, and colonizing the stars. The billionaire also plans to replace the old inefficient railroad with a system that pushes people around like parcels in a mail tube. Hyperloop is a system of vacuum tubes that would allow travelers to travel from point A to point B in minutes rather than hours. Musk, though, didn't have time to expand on his initial plan, so in 2013 he made the software open source for everyone to try. The first moves toward a worldwide network of near-supersonic transport tubes are being taken less than three years later. Before we continue, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get more videos delivered right to you. Let's start. Number 10 is what is Hyperloop? The Hyperloop is a new model of land transportation that is currently being developed by several firms. Passengers will ride at speeds of up to 700 miles per hour in a floating capsule that travels through giant low-pressure tubes above or below the ground. Between Hyperloop and standard rail, there are two major variations. To start, the passenger pods fly through tunnels that have much of the air removed to minimize friction. The pods should be able to travel at a speed of up to 750 miles per hour as a result. Second, rather than using wheels like a train or vehicle, the pods are designed to float on air skis or use magnetic levitation to minimize friction, similar to the air hockey table. Number 9. What is the history of the Hyperloop? The use of low-pressure or vacuum tubes in transportation systems has a long history. In 1864, the Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway in Victoria, South London, used air pressure to propel a carriage uphill and a vacuum to pull it back down. Similar pneumatic tube systems have been used to deliver mail and parcels between buildings since the late 1800s and can still be seen in stores and banks to pass money around today. The VAC train model developed by Robert Goddard early in the 20th century is a direct forerunner of the Hyperloop. Since then, many related concepts have been suggested without much success. Elon Musk, the businessman, was the one who came up with the idea. However, it was entrepreneur Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha article, published in 2013, that reignited interest in the idea by setting out how a modern system would work and how much it would cost. Number 8. What is Hyperloop Alpha? Musk argued in his Hyperloop Alpha paper that service between Los Angeles and San Francisco would be less expensive and quicker than a planned high-speed rail connection. He claimed that his Hyperloop system would be safer, quicker, more affordable, weatherproof, self-powered, and less harmful to residents living along the corridor. Musk believes that a Hyperloop service would be the solution for travel between cities that are less than 1,500 kilometers or 900 miles apart. Beyond that, he believes that supersonic air travel will be more effective. Quote, The only choice for super-fast travel is to create a tube over or under the ground that contains a special atmosphere, Musk said. Quote, Short of finding actual teleportation, which will of course be amazing, someone please do this, the only option for super-fast travel is to build a tube over or under the ground that contains a special environment. Unfortunately, no one has made any progress with the teleportation concept, although a variety of organizations have recognized the Hyperloop's promise. Number 7 is How Does Hyperloop Tube Work? The fundamental principle of Musk's Hyperloop is that passenger pods, or capsules, fly into a tunnel that is either above or below ground. Pumps expel much, though not all, of the fluid from the tubes to minimize friction. One of the most energy-intensive aspects of high-speed flight is overcoming air resistance. To achieve a similar effect at ground level, Hyperloop encloses the capsules in a reduced pressure tunnel, essentially allowing the trains to fly at plane speeds while still on the ground. The pressure inside the Hyperloop tunnel, according to Musk's model, is around one-sixth of that of Mars' atmosphere, a noteworthy distinction given Musk's interest in Mars. This translates to an operating pressure of 100 pascals, which decreases the air's drag power by a thousand times as compared to sea levels and is equal to traveling at altitudes of over 150,000 feet. Number six is how do Hyperloop capsules work? In Musk's model, the Hyperloop capsules float above the tube's surface on a series of 28 air-bearing skis, analogous to how an air hockey puck floats only above the table. One significant difference is that the air cushion is produced by the pod rather than the track. It makes the tube as clear and inexpensive as possible. 
Magnetic levitation rather than air skis is used in some Hyperloop models to hold the passenger pods above the rails. The pod's initial velocity would be provided by an external linear electric motor, which would propel it to high subsonic velocity and then raise it every 70 miles or so. In the meantime, the pod would coast along in near vacuum. Each capsule could accommodate 28 passengers plus baggage. Other versions aim for 40. While other variants of the pods could move freight and vehicles, Every two minutes, a pod will leave, or every 30 seconds at peak usage. Number five is how would Hyperloop be powered? The pods would be propelled by an external linear electric motor, which is essentially a rolled flat circular induction motor, like the one used in the Tesla Model S. According to Musk's plan, the Hyperloop will be powered by solar panels mounted on the tube's roof, allowing the device to produce more electricity than it requires operating. Number four is how is Hyperloop different from other high-speed trains? Hyperloop supporters contend that it is much superior to high-speed rail. It's less expensive and uses less electricity because the track does not need to supply power to the pods constantly. And the pods will depart every 30 seconds, making it more of an on-demand operation. That could even be two to three times quicker than high-speed rail, and 10 times the speed of regular rail services. Number three is how much would a Hyperloop cost to build? Musk estimates that the LA to San Francisco Hyperloop would cost less than six billion. Musk pictured a half hour trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco, with pods leaving every 30 seconds and holding 28 passengers each. Musk calculated the expense of a one-way passenger Hyperloop fare at $20, plus running costs after spreading the capital cost over 20 years and factoring in maintenance costs. The tube network pays for the bulk of the system's expense. The total cost of the tube, pillars, vacuum pumps, and stations for the tourist version of Hyperloop, $7 billion for a slightly larger version that can also hold freight, was estimated at just over $4 billion. The capsules are estimated to cost around $1.35 million each, with 40 required for the operation. The total cost is around $54 million, or $70 million for a combination of passenger and cargo capsules. That's less than 9% of the expense of the new high-speed rail system for passengers only. Number two is what will it feel like to travel in Hyperloop? Traveling in the Hyperloop tunnel, according to critics, may be an unpleasant experience due to nauseating acceleration and lateral G-forces on bends in the route. However, Virgin Hyperloop One exclaims that a Hyperloop ride would be similar to sitting in an elevator or in a commuter jet. Quote, while Hyperloop would be short, the systems we are developing would accelerate with the same tolerable G-forces as a Boeing 747 takeoff." Unquote. It also stated that the acceleration and deceleration would be incremental, with no G-forces or turbulence. There won't be anything to look at when traveling in a concrete pipe in a windowless pod. Musk's original vision stated that the beautiful scenery will be reflected in the cabin, and that each passenger will have access to their entertainment system. Number one is, Will Hyperloop be a success? That's the multi-billion dollar issue concerning Hyperloop that is yet to be resolved. The idea has been around for a long time, but the infrastructure has been lacking up till now. Likely, science is just caught up with the idea this time around. Another problem is capacity. It's unclear if Hyperloop would transport a vast amount of passengers more efficiently than other mass transportation alternatives. Critics contend that to reach the same passenger numbers as standard rail, which requires even larger carriages, a larger number of pods would be needed. There are also many technical challenges to solve, such as making the tube sturdy enough to withstand the pressure of transporting the high-speed pods, and seeking space and cost-effective ways to keep them running at low pressure. Currently, Hyperloop is in the testing stage, even though the businesses concerned are eager to discuss its possibilities. That's it for the 10 things you didn't know about Hyperloop. If you liked our video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.